Thank you. Um, all right, so now we're open for further comments. Um, I was going to call on uh, <clears throat> the General Counsel of Commerce, Cameron Kelly, if he's – Kerry, I'm sorry, if he's up for that, uh, because you might want to give the position on, on this and, and so forth. Uh, but you cannot speak until you get a microphone, which is coming because – Gabby is moving in your direction. And if you'll just introduce yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I'm Cameron Carey. I'm the general counsel of the Department of Commerce. Um, and the development of, uh, of voluntary standards uh, plays an increasing role in our work, uh, certainly in the work uh, that you have heard about uh, by NIST, the National uh, Institute of uh, Standards and Technology, formerly uh, the Bureau of Standards. Uh, but increasingly in regulatory work as, as we move forward. Um, the development of, of standards uh, uh, using voluntary consensus standards uh, uh, is a uh, public-private partnership uh, uh, that works. Uh, it has worked uh, for NIST uh, in, uh, in its development uh, of standards, in the close work uh, uh, that it does with a great many uh, standards-setting organizations. Increasingly, it plays uh, an important role in work that we are doing in, uh, in the innovation space, uh, uh, dealing with the Internet, uh, dealing uh, with work uh, forthcoming uh, on the Obama administration's uh, uh, development of privacy policy, uh, where we look to uh, the model uh, of standard setting to, uh, to deal with uh, the development of regulation uh, uh, in a way that can match Internet speed. Um, uh, so the, the role of standard-setting uh, organizations uh, is, uh, is critical uh, uh, to that. Um, certainly as we have gone through uh, uh, the work of uh, of developing a multi-stakeholder process for privacy policy. One of the comments that we've heard from uh, a great many uh, uh, civil society organizations, consumer organizations, others, is the concern about their capacity, uh, their resources uh, to participate uh, in the process. So the ability of standard-setting organizations to fund uh, their participation is critical to this process. As, as John Coney said, uh, information wants to be free, uh, but often information uh, is not free. Uh, and you know, one of the challenges of our information system is uh, to create uh, mechanisms for, uh, for the payment of information. So, the work that has been done on these recommendations uh, uh, strike an appropriate balance uh, uh, that, uh, that does not uh, kill the golden goose, but uh, makes important steps to encourage uh, transparency in this area. Um, I oppose the Strauss Amendment uh, uh, because I think it uh, ultimately, as, as it has ended up, uh, represents uh, uh, a step backward from that. I appreciate uh, the efforts that uh, Professor Strout made to, uh, to deal with the issue of funding of standards setting organizations uh, uh, and you know, to, uh, to enable uh, preserving a fee-setting uh, model uh, for for that information, um, but you know what is left does not I think, avoid the problem altogether by not expressly 
acknowledging that payment may be called for by, as Professor Strauss put it, attempting to bury the issue. I think it is a move away from the transparency that the work of this committee has encouraged of that critical objective here. So I would move that we table the amendment and adopt the proposal as recommended. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. That concludes argument in this case.